This is magic waiting to happen. I'm still shocked. 20 years in the hospo game and still people are leaving massive amounts of cash on the table. There's a common theme to literally all the cafes I've worked in over the last 20 years. And that is sadly all except one company is closed. Why is that? There's bound to be a variety of factors, but they all lead to one simple detail that none of the owners got the memo on. In this video, I am going to show you one simple, effective, and best of all, cheap method to cash in where literally all other cafes are dropping the ball. Imagine what would happen if you cashed in. But first, what was the reason these cafes are all shut? Oh, I'm still in shock. The major significant cause for these closures was the inability to make enough money to pay their bills. Sounds uber complex, right? So many are in the dark about something so vital to their success. Bear with me, I'm going to set the scene a little with some details that'll make this cash flow problem evident and what cafe owners should really be focused on when they open up shop. To be very transparent, the economic factors affecting cafes are tremendous. Low margin, low paying clients that are fussy, high staff turnover. Oh my God, why would you even do this? The fact is, business literacy and financial literacy are just not taught in hospitality courses. Already there's a bunch of setbacks purely because those who open up cafes aren't clued in to the financial commitments they are making. As we saw earlier, businesses are closing because they're unable to pay their bills. Right, big problem, no cash flow, we are screwed. How can we get cash flow? Let's see about some options. Word of mouth. I watched an amazing French inspired cafe whose owner poured millions of dollars into it. She relied on word of mouth. Yep, they're closed. Word of mouth can work, but maybe have a backup as well. Okay then, social media posting. Good luck on social media. It is literally designed not to get engagement. They are really paid advertising companies with a free option. TikTok may be the exception depending on how you use it. Okay then, how about billboards? Ah, super expensive, massive investment, not going to work. Okay then, newspapers. <laughs> What's a newspaper? Okay, sorry. Newspapers are a generalized form of marketing. There's no guarantee that the readers are the people who want your stuff. Hmm, this is getting annoying. I know what you're thinking. Hey, Mish, just spit it out. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. What's cheap has massive ROI and can be built on a daily basis with little prior experience. You guessed it, it's email marketing. Yes, that's right. You buy a random list from a publicity company and blast your pitch. No! This is magic waiting to happen, but you've got to do it right. Now, when I say magic, unfortunately, Harry Potter isn't going to join in and craft your perfect email sequence. It will be you. However, that sense of love and passion you've got at the heart of your cafe will begin to blossom with every email. Yeah, you'll get those warm fuzzies, bro. First thing I want you to know about email marketing, it is just as much of an art form as making the perfect Benny or flat white. There's a science, there's a recipe. Scripting emails is a topic for another time. Right now, I want you to focus on your next best step. Get those email contacts. No, silly, you don't just go up to people and ask for their emails. That's literally the same as asking a customer for a picture of their spouse in the nude. It's rude, don't do it, it'll kill your trade. Instead, make the extra effort, provide something of value in return for those email contacts. It could be a competition to win a product, store credit, something cool that emphasizes how special they are to you and breeds that love of your products into their life. An example, at the point of sale, mention the promotion by asking, lovely to see you today. Did you know that we're giving away one year's worth of free coffee? All you've got to do is provide your email and a name right here on this sheet. Don't wait for the response, politely hand them the sheet, they fill it out and we're done. There's so many places using online ordering systems. You can add the lead capture to the sales process, but be sure to have a smiling, bouncing staff member make that inquiry for the email at the table as well. Well, wait, there's another problem. There's absolutely no reason for your staff to do this. 
unless they are passionate and self-driven, it's probably not gonna happen. Incentivize, a gift voucher, store credit, movie tickets, these things work. Best of all, this is done during work hours, it doesn't cost any more. And the customer gets an even more attentive experience. Win-win, baby. That word of mouth marketing might come into play now. Sticking to this customer-centric idea of giving before getting is just the goal to make you look like Thor when the Avengers are getting annihilated and you step in to save the day. Seriously though, get those emails. Your first email campaign will probably flop the same way your first reverse park gave the driving instructor PTSD. It's a practice thing, don't worry about it. To be precise, run these campaigns at least four times a year. Here's some examples of where in order to get a chance to win, the customer has to make a purchase. Cha-ching, that's cash flow, baby. Summer cool drinks promo. Winter warmer, braised brisket, spring lambshell warmer. In effect, once you've got those emails, the magic can begin. It's not an overnight process. However, it is a really effective way to communicate with people outside of office hours. As you might have noticed by now, it's not about making sales. It's about giving great customer service and being creative in solving that cash flow problem. Moving forward, you've got those emails. What's next, you say? I thought you'd never ask. It's time to get your first email campaign going because these vulnerable coffee drinkers need to know you're serious. But start off with a follow-up email by saying congratulations, thank you, and good luck for the coffee promo. Have some really impactful words with some really impactful imagery that support your coffee promotion. But which email services should you use? That's a budget and a functionality thing. It's really up to you. I've used Substack, Klaviyo, and MailChimp. They all work fine, but you gotta do your recon on this one. I'll give you a hint about structuring your email. Use an acronym structure like ADA, attention, interest, desire, action. Works really well. Here's an example. Attention, something that's eye-catching, such as why you need coffee every morning. Interest, the problem you're going to solve with the product. A morning commute, for example, could be depressing. You're anticipating a terrible day at work and it's unfulfilling. If that's you, then our Vitalized Blend is your perfect antidote. Desire, an outcome for the problem. The energy increase is but one amazing effect. The secret is in the roasting of the beans. These beans are carefully roasted to preserve the energy hit and provide a chocolatey flavor. Not to mention that texture, pure velvet. Action, something you want them to do as a result of all of this. Write in every day with a cup of love that we call Vitalize what sounds like a Disney movie really is the missing link in people's mornings. And yes, coffee can be and is that good. Wouldn't you like to be the reason your customers didn't have an altercation at work and felt like someone appreciated their custom? The major challenge that coffee houses face is that the average consumer will choose their brew mainly because of price and the convenience to get it. With most cafes having poor customer relations, this leaves the ones who go all in on building an experience of existential proportions in both product and service to take home the glory. Oh, and did I mention the financial payoff? It's huge.